Let's take a look at an implementation of a merge sort in vb.net. In fact, I'm going to look at two. The first is basically the same as the algorithm I've already described in some detail, and the second improves on its efficiency. Here's my button code. All I'm doing here is setting up an unordered list that needs to be sorted. I've declared a dynamic array called listout, which will collect the return value from my function. And here I'm calling the merge sort function. I'm passing it the list. This loop here is simply building an output string so I can output the contents of the sorted list to see if it's worked. This is the merge sort function here. It takes one parameter, an unsorted array, and as I've said, it returns a sorted array. Here, I'm declaring a couple of dynamic arrays, which get passed to one of the helper programs. Otherwise, this program is exactly like the pseudocode which I talked about previously. This is the split list program. Again, pretty much the same as the pseudocode I've already talked about. An unsorted array is passed in, along with two empty arrays. And then this program does little more than put half of the data into one list and half of it into another, so we end up with two smaller, unordered lists. Notice that this is a procedure rather than a function. A function can only return one value or one list, so instead we have a procedure which is passed two empty arrays by reference. Notice the by ref keyword here. The caller of this procedure therefore has access to the two lists it generates. I calculate the midpoint of the source array here. Math.floor just rounds the calculation down for us. Then we use a couple of pointers to scan the source array and to populate the target arrays accordingly. This is the merge two lists function. Just like the pseudocode I described, it takes two ordered lists and uses them to create a single ordered list. This is where the hard work is done, if you can call it hard work. We declare a new dynamic array, which will be the target for the merge. We then dimension it according to the sizes of the two source arrays. Then we use some pointers to take data items from one source list or the other, depending on their values, and we copy them into the target array. Something I didn't mention in my pseudocode are these two loops here. We might have a situation where we've copied all of the items from one list into the target, but there's still some left to be copied from the other list. In this situation, one of these loops will transfer the remaining data. The remaining items can be copied across unconditionally because they're coming from an ordered list in the first place. So those are the helper programs. And here's the merge sort function which ties them together. This function works its way through the ordered list, recursively splitting and merging portions of it. So let's give it a whirl. There it is, an ordered list. Do look at my previous videos about this if you haven't done so already. You might also find it useful to duplicate this code and step through it with a watch window and a call stack window. So my first cut of an implementation of a merge sort function in vb.net is essentially a working version of the pseudocode I've already described, but to be honest, it could be a lot more efficient with a small amount of work. The inefficiency is down to the way that the split list help procedure works. There's also a couple of other tweaks that can be made to improve the way data is passed around the helper programs. In this version, the original array is passed by reference, so as to cut down on unnecessary duplication of data in the memory. Along with that, the function is passed integer pointers to the first and the last element of the array, i low and i high. And these are used to calculate the middle of the array. These pointers are modified with successive recursive calls to redefine the portion of the array that needs to be worked on next. 
This means we are virtually splitting the array with successive calls rather than actually splitting it. So we're not passing around chunks of the original array, just pointers to different sections of it. Recalculating pointers is so simple it might as well be done in this function, which means our original split list procedure is now redundant. This is our new base case. Unlike the previous version, we can no longer test to see if the size of the array is zero as a base case, because it never changes. If i low is smaller than i high, then the array, that is the portion that we're working with, can still be split further. If i low is equal to i high, then we can't split any further, so the current invocation need not invoke itself again. We can return anything we like here. It's of no consequence, because the original array was passed in by reference. A boolean true will do just fine. Here, we calculate the middle, and then the program calls itself, passing in the left half of an array. A subtle but important feature of this call, which processes the right-hand side of the list, is that middle plus one is being passed in as the second parameter. So middle plus one is viewed as i low by the next invocation of merge sort. The key enhancement of this merge program is that it performs a merge in place. That is, the original array is the target array for the merge, which saves a lot of space, especially for very big lists. The values for i low, i middle and i high that are passed into this procedure are all it needs to work out which two sections of the original list that it's got to merge together. Remember, i low is not necessarily zero. Here we calculate the upper bound of the left portion and here we calculate the upper bound of the right portion. We set up our temporary arrays to merge together. Here we generate the temporary left half. Here we generate the temporary right half. And the following code is almost identical to that which we would use to create a brand new target array. But instead we scan the target array starting from a position that leaves its sorted data intact. Notice how we redefine PTR3 to i low, which eliminates the portion of the target array that's already been sorted. If you explore other implementations of the merge sort, you'll see lots of variations, all trying to eke out that extra bit of performance in terms of space and time. And some of them are very clever indeed, but also very complicated. I should also say that recursion isn't the only way to go. The recursive calls in my program are all tail recursive, which means an iterative approach is perfectly valid. In fact, if you look around, there are plenty of iterative examples out there too. But I think this one strikes a nice balance between performance and readability. Let's give it a go. And there we go, a sorted list.